does this mean uh, that the Trump effect is is still you know living on among uh, the electorate? Well, we won the race. So yeah, Donald Trump, a candidate uh, at the time, won uh, by 27 points in Kansas. Ron Estes, a two-term uh, treasurer, I think kind of dialed it in. I think he was particularly lazy by missing candidate forms. He didn't take it too seriously because he felt, hey, people already know me, and I think that was a mistake. So if there would have been pretty much a bit more help from the Democratic Party, it could have been maybe a different result. I kind of doubt it because there's an overwhelmingly Republican district. In addition to that, when you have an overwhelmingly Republican district, voters get very confident. They stay home. They don't think that they need, you need their support because they know Republicans are going to win. Richard, do you see it differently? Uh, I do. Uh, here's a couple things. One, the Republican Party invested a lot in what is supposed to be a safe seat. The Cook Report says this is a Republican plus 15 seat. Democrats almost won the seat last night. Um, they, Estes only won by seven points, but Ted Cruz stumped for him. There was a robocall by Donald Trump. There was a robocall by Mike Pence. And the NRCC, the campaign arm of Paul Ryan's shop, spent $150,000 in this race. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I do believe that Democrats did fail here. I, I, said, I said this yesterday on, on this air that we've got to do a better job of investing in every race from dog catcher to president of the United States. And we do. And this is a pr proof of that. But beyond that point, Republicans put a lot of money in what should have been a relatively safe seat. Let's remember that Mike Pompeo won this seat by 30 points six months ago. So, so to now come in with for Democrats to make up 20 some odd points in six Boy, months, that's remarkable. Well, Richard, Richard, let me stick with you for a minute because one of the criticisms that's been leveled at the Democratic Party uh, during the Obama era is that it has sort of failed to develop a, a bench of viable candidates. Some of, the, some of the blame for that was laid at the feet of President Obama, but the number of Republican governors is up, the number of Republican held legislatures is up. Um, Republicans, you know, outside Washington, D.C., have been very much on the rise in this country. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think you're absolutely right, John. I think Republicans are the party that rule this country right now. And that means that for all, when you're, when you're, the, when you're the party that's in control, all the spoils go to you, and so do all the defeats. Democrats have got to do a better job of investing in races a like this. While job. Obama was in office, we lost a 1,000 seats down ballot. And we've got to stop that bleeding. And that requires right. that our party invest in local races. But with that but being you, said, Republicans... Republicans can't get too sort of uh, you know too high off the horse here and too happy because they should have won. This, this, this shouldn't have been Richard. a race well, at all. We're, yeah, John, we're, we're, John, what, what about that? Because it should be a Republican cakewalk in a state like Kansas, not Arkansas, Kansas. You, yeah, and Kansas. And you know what? For people like Richard, my friend Richard, to make this to be indicative of a national crisis for the party, I think is incorrect and is wrong on many levels. The only way that there's a problem with our, our uh, ticket, or rather our elections moving forward, is if the Freedom Caucus gets involved, as they, to me, become an obstructionist regime. And I got a special message for the Freedom Caucus. Either you get on board with the team, or we're going to drain you with the swamp. And it's problematic on many levels, me being an individual uh, a Republican operative of over 10 years, having people like the Freedom Caucus come in and be obstructionist to policies that we're trying to move forward and develop, develop and deliver big wins to the American people. So unless something like that becomes a, a, a systemic issue, which I don't think it will be, we're going to be fine and we're going to continue to deliver wins for the American people. So I think uh, 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 folks yeah, like my, yeah, my friend sounds, Richard sounds like stop drinking the cooler. Sounds like you're setting up a circular firing squad within the Republican Party. Well, truth be told, I am an individual who has been a Republican for 10 years. I've lost friends. Family has disowned me because I'm an African-American. I've drained blood, sweat, and tears into making sure Republicans win elections. Time and time again. Now we're in a place that we have the majority, we have the White House, we have both houses, and we're not going to capitulate to the, the demands of the Freedom Caucus. Mm. They need to get on board with the team because they're putting us in a very bad light at this point, John. We'll, we'll see John. if they're listening. Uh, uh, we have to say goodbye. Richard, Jono, thank, thank you, you both. We'll get you both back on soon. Good to be here, soon. John. Thanks.